How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday night. It is the Earth Master out here, 1048 p.m. Local time, California. April 17, 2025 is the date. Uh, latest activity specifically on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 1.4 into Alaska. Uh, noticing a little bit of larger movement out here across the West Coast. Well, actually, it's well into the Intermountain West region with a 4.1 earthquake out here south of Yellowstone outside of Jackson, Wyoming. That's a little odd one, right? About 2.4 miles deep there for that quake. It looks like it was felt by a few folks out there around Jackson, Wyoming area. Now, uh, looking at some of the, uh, let's see if we can find some of the magnitudes out here. 4.1, 3.9, um, take your pick, depending on what the seismograph stations are reading out there. But it uh, looks like it, uh, a little bit of earthquake activity out there this evening. That uh, striking at about, uh, let's see, 2207, so just about you know, under an hour ago. Uh, definitely an odd one. Don't see a whole lot of earthquake activity out there. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, Yellowstone overview here real quick. I bet you, I, I can almost guarantee you that 4.1 showed up quite nicely uh, there across Yellowstone. And that's good. This kind of gives us a, a good chance to look at the seismograph stations that are actually online and that are reporting current data. And uh, there it is. There's that 4.1 showing up uh, across the area of Yellowstone. Obviously, um, the majority of the stations out here picking up, aside from Mirror Lake Plateau, Pelican Cove, Cone, uh, I, you know, I think if an asteroid were to hit this area, I wouldn't even pick those up on that seismograph station. So these two are irrelevant, but the majority of the seismograph stations out there picking up that 4.1. Uh, again, it's this reading right down here. Not a whole lot of local activity there across Yellowstone. Uh, maybe... One earthquake here, two, okay, maybe one or two smaller quakes prior to the four-pointer. But, uh, yeah, interesting activity out there. Um, there. You know, there's obviously some fault systems out there around the Grand Teton National Park area, uh, specifically around this region here. Let's go ahead and take a look here underneath the area, see what we got. Obviously, some beautiful forested mountain regions. Who knows what's going on underneath there about two miles deep. But uh, a little bit of activity out there. Looks like it's around the Table Mountain area. There's obviously some fault systems out here not showing up on the USGS map. But the latest quake up there on the uh, on the map, Washington area, a couple smaller earthquakes. Really nothing going on across the, Cas or the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. But let's just double check the trimmer map this evening. See what we got going on. Zero epicenters of trimmer. Not a whole lot going on there for the... Uh, Cascadia zone. As far as California, let's go ahead and check down here, see if we got anything major going on. A couple more ones, including a 2.6 out here this afternoon around Julian, California. That's where the 5.2 earthquake struck here about three days ago. Still seeing some aftershock sequences there. Total tally of earthquakes, well, in the area, about 316 earthquakes here. Uh, the, obviously, the majority of these aftershock sequences following that 5.2 with some uh, spread out earthquake activity out there. Uh, no major movement to report across the San Andreas Fault for now. Uh, as far as the Los Angeles area, pretty quiet aside from uh, maybe one earthquake around the Malibu area. Still got a considerable amount of swarming up here around the Garlock Fault shear zone. That's been a been an active area as well. That, along with the movement down south here, uh, is a, a sign of a lot of stress out here along the plate boundary. That's the San Andreas Fault. San Francisco, pretty quiet. Nothing filling in there, but uh, I do expect that to fill in eventually. Uh, but for now, just some smaller microquake activity around the region and out around the oil fields of Texas there. Nothing going on across the rest of the country. Uh, so for most of the movement here, let's go ahead and check out the Earthquake 3D uh, program, see what we got. New Zealand seeing a couple threes down there. Nothing big. The latest quake at 3.1, South Island area. Uh, that leaves a uh, very seismic, uh, seismically open gap zone here across the uh, Solomon Islands area all the way down to the Tonga Trench. So this should fill in eventually. Um, doesn't stay quiet like that for long. A lot of crunching going on here across the crunch zone. That uh, it's you know I, I call it the crunch zone because that's pretty much 
what it is. It's a uh, area that uh, the plate boundary, the plates here tend to move in. You got the Australia plate, the Eurasia plate, the Pacific plate, all uh, colliding out here, and that's uh, you know that's where you get a lot of subduction, colliding, and earthquake activity. So obviously very common movement out here as far as threes fours and even some fives out there today across that area nothing big but uh, man is that noticeable out there japan area pretty quiet aside from a 3.7 southern end of the nankai trough watching this area pretty closely there southern coast of japan that's uh, got some potential there for it you know if you, if you look at the map here on the usgs map here pretty quiet across the western area of the pacific plate so uh, in, in that sense, we've got to watch areas back east here. Normally, when things go quiet out across the western Pacific, things really ramp up here across the eastern Pacific. So we'll watch out throughout the evening. Uh, a couple twos and whatnot across Australia. Or, uh, whoa, when did Australia move up north? That's Alaska way up there. So a couple of earthquakes up there. Nothing big, just some uh, smaller smaller quake activity and some older movement there from this morning with that five point or 4.2. Look at that earthquake. It stands out out there, right? Goodness. We'll have to keep an eye on Yellowstone, see if things don't uh, kick up around there. South America, a handful of earthquakes down there in the four in the four range, upper four range. Got uh, a couple deeper earthquakes down there across the Peru Chile Trench. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on there. Across the Mediterranean region, uh, some twos and threes. Uh, aside from that, uh, let's go ahead and check out space weather activity. We'll just kind of keep it short and simple. This evening, we do have a number of sunspots out there creeping around the eastern limb. Notice on the UV filter here of the sun, uh, a number of them, uh, at least four, maybe five of them out there. Let's go ahead and check out the latest magnetogram image of the sun. Looking at the complexity models here, um, really not all that concerned with these little smaller ones here. Uh, but this area back here. That's going to be sunspot number 4064 right here. That uh, looks rather interesting there. A couple different dynamic uh, magnetic uh, areas there of that sunspot that could harbor some, uh, maybe some M flare activity. Not really too concerned with this area. Uh, this one either. So we'll watch this area. That's about the only source there that I see uh, producing some, you know, significant uh, flaring. Nothing in the X-flare right now, but it uh, does have some M-flare probability. Uh, no major roars there in the forecast for now. A look at the Storm Prediction Center. Seen, uh, wow, I think we've seen some uh, tornadoes out there around Iowa this evening. Still continuing into the evening there with that tornado threat, wind and some hail threats there across uh, Iowa and portions of eastern Nebraska. Uh, the storm reports this evening here. Go ahead and check this out. Got, uh, uh, wow, 16 reports of some tornado activity. Eastern Nebraska into Iowa. That is crazy. Um, so, of course, this is all preliminary data, but uh, uh, definitely I think the Storm Prediction Center called this quite well. Uh, 13 reports of wind and 80. Is that right? 80 reports of large hail? That is crazy out there. That was going to be the main threat. So that was uh, called for as well. Watch for that throughout the evening. Um, the storm models here, as we look towards the long-range models here, uh, end of April, beginning of May, look, uh, well, th this is something you really don't want to see if you don't like severe weather. Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, your traditional tornado alley out here, looks like a big-time severe weather event. Um, potential here towards the end of April, beginning of May. So watch for that. Uh, that's a serious deal right there. Got to watch that pretty closely. All right, um, real quick glance here. Nothing major going on for now across Southern California, but uh, we'll definitely watch it. Definitely some interesting activity out there around the uh, Jackson area. Of Wyoming, here's the last 30 days. Not a whole lot down south here. Excuse me, I just got hiccups, hiccups all of a sudden. Um, so this earthquake around Jackson, uh, you know, it's it, it can definitely see some earthquake activity out there. But uh, it's been a little, I'd say it's been a little while since we've seen any 
something of that size. So we'll continue to watch it here, folks, and report back on anything. Guess what? Guess what? Tomorrow is Friday. We made it uh, towards the weekend here. So we'll catch you guys out here for the uh, Friday morning update. We'll see you guys out here real soon. Have a good night.